Hi friends today i am going to discuss another interesting topic tmj imaging what we expect and what we get our previous video was on temporomandibular joint dysfunction diagnosis and if you have missed it kindly watch it the area where mandible articulates with the temporal bone of the cranium is called the temporomandibular joint Temporomandibular joint is one of the most complex joint in our body. TMJ is called as a compound joint. Compound joint is the presence of at least three bones. Yet TMJ is made of only two bones. Functionally, articulate disc serves as a non-ossified bone which permits complex movements. TMJ is one complex joint when it comes to diagnosis of temporomandibular joint dysfunction imaging of temporomandibular joint and also management of temporomandibular joint dysfunction when a patient comes to us with pain in temporomandibular joint most of us expect a gross morphologic change in the shape of condyle erosions during imaging but it's not true there is an universal consensus that 90% of the temporomandibular joint dysfunction are muscular in origin there are also other components like ligaments nerves vessels which play a major role in contributing tmd symptoms so in many clinical situations we see an absolutely normal condyle despite the patient suffering from extreme pain orthopantomogram is a widely used imaging technique for patients with temporomandibular joint dysfunction i would call opg as an initial screening tool it shows the components of temporal bone eminence fossa condyle dentition maxilla and mandible opg is like a trailer it gives us an overview of whatever is present and the other conditions like impacted teeth maxillary sinus sinusitis along its tailored process which can cause temporomandibular dysfunction like pain can also be assessed the only problem is we dental surgeons depend too much on OPG The problems associated with OPG are superimposition of temporal structures on the temporomandibular joint and another thing when we look at joint is we look for the joint space through OPG Always remember during OPG exposure we ask the patient to bite on a bite fork so that the mandible is slightly anteriorly positioned and the teeth are not in maximum intercuspation so hence it's not a good way to assess articular space through opg but we can always ask the patient to clench in maximum intercuspation so that you can assess joint space to some extent this is a symptomatic temporomandibular joint dysfunction patient with history of rheumatoid arthritis the radiographic features were consistent with the clinical findings and history severe erosive changes and alteration of shape of condyle is seen and within few years we may see the shape of a condyle something similar to that of a sharpened pencil which is a characteristic feature of rheumatoid arthritis these are few interesting condylar changes and the first picture you can see the shape this is called as toadstool appearance this is a condition called as juvenile arthrosis and the second pic is a case of hypoplastic condyle or condylar hypoplasia as a result of trauma in the young age these are various abnormal shapes of condyle as well as few morphological variations 
in the shape of condyle. TMJ tomography is one interesting 2D radiographic technique to assess TMJ. It gives us details regarding the condylar shape, details regarding fossa and eminence both in open and closed mouth position. Condyle is a bony ellipsoid process. It measures approximately 20 mm in width mesiodistally and 8 to 10 mm anterior posteriorly. The shape of condyle varies considerably. The superior condylar surface may be flat, round or convex. Mediolaterally, the contour is usually convex. These variation in shape may cause difficulty with radiographic interpretation and it is this that underlines the importance of understanding the range of normal appearance. Cone beam computed tomography creates image volume that allows the user to reconstruct the sectional views of anatomy in multiple customized plane. These sessions allow structures of joint to be assessed without superimposition of surrounding anatomy. This is a coronal CBCT scan obtained with the patient in closed mouth position and the teeth in maximum intercuspation. We can appreciate the abnormal shape of condyle and reduced disc space in the right side when you compare it with the left side. Cone beam CT is ideal for imaging osseous changes associated with degenerative joint disease evaluating ankylosis, fractures, neoplasm, etc. And soft tissues like disc cannot be imaged by CBCT. Lateral cephalogram is one very rarely used imaging technique and it's a very interesting technique. It uses lots of details regarding the position of maxilla and mandible to cranial base. It uses many important details about airway which plays a role in temporomandibular joint dysfunction. And if you ask me what would I like to see in temporomandibular joint, my answer would be I would like to see the position of condyle in fossa during open and closed mouth position, the position of disc, the retrodiscal tissue whether it's inflamed or not and the status of lateral pterygoids. The most commonly used soft tissue imaging technique when clinical findings such as disc displacement with symptoms such as TMG pain and they do not respond to conventional or conservative treatment is MRI. Special surface coil is used to improve image quality and the T1 wide image is used to determine osseous as well as discal tissue whereas the T2 image is used to demonstrate inflammation and joint effusion. Both closed and open mouth image, images can be obtained. Cinematic or Cine MRI studies can be obtained by fast scan technique. The only problem with MRI is that we need special coils and we need a radiologist who is expert in TMJ diagnosis. And I would like to conclude this presentation stating that temporomandibular joint is a compound joint with lots of complexities in diagnosis and management. There is no single step that can guide us or give us diagnosis in temporomandibular joint dysfunction. Careful history taking, clinical examination followed by 
Choosing the right imaging technique plays a major role in successful management of temporomandibular joint dysfunction. Thank you.